KCIN FM, Albuquerque. In just a few minutes, George Anderson will take the oath of office and become the 47th President of the United States. In the rising tensions throughout the world with the oil crisis and invasion of Taiwan, this ceremony is a symbol of prevailing democracy. It reaffirms a promise made 235 years ago with the Constitution, a promise that, despite all the challenges America might face, the democratic process will endure. Our nation has undergone countless changes, but one thing remains constant. Every four years, the people come together to peacefully choose their leader. In the last election, concerns were raised about the potential erosion of our democracy, but today's transition of power is nearly textbook. Tom Whitaker publicly conceded last year right after he learned he wouldn't win re-election, and he expressed how he regrets being unable to continue the tradition of attending the inauguration ceremony as a sitting president due to his father's funeral in San Diego. While the world outside is gripped with tension, the streets of Washington are alive with a sense of unity and anticipation. Where we saw our protests turn into riots four years ago, we now see cheering crowds. With that in mind, let's cut back to the inauguration. This is the moment. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, George Douglas Anderson, do solemnly swear... I, George Douglas Anderson, do solemnly swear... That I will faithfully execute... That I will faithfully execute... The office of President of the United States... The office of the President of the United States... And will, to the best of my ability... And will, to the best of my ability... Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. No vision, no stars. No vision, no stars. We apologize for the interruption, but our personnel have to evacuate for their own safety in what appears to be an attack on the inauguration ceremony. The police responded quickly, and the area is now mostly clear of civilians. Unfortunately, it seems that the assailants have escaped with the crowd. The president-elect has left the scene in a motorcade, but we don't know whether he was injured. If he's unharmed, he will most likely be transported to the White House for a rush swearing-in, which will probably not be televised. If he was injured in the attack, or if he gets held up by other means, he might not be able to take the oath before the end of Whitaker's term at noon Eastern Time, 10 a.m. here. As an expert told us 20 minutes ago, the new Vice President, Deanna Reddington, or the Speaker of the House would be first and second in line to take office. But both were present at the inauguration, so they're in the same situation as Anderson. Typically, a cabinet member is selected before the inauguration to be the designated survivor staying at a secure location so they can take office temporarily if needed. If Anderson is unable to take the oath in time, this person would likely become acting president. We do not know who the designated survivor is at this time. In a minute or two, we'll be taking calls from our viewers. Our number is 212-664-7665. That's 212-664-7665. For those just tuning in, the inauguration of George Anderson was just interrupted during the oath of office by what's believed to be gunfire. 
We don't know the status of the president-elect at this time, but reports are just coming in that sitting President Whitaker has taken off from St. Joseph Cathedral in Marine One, the presidential helicopter. Whitaker is likely being transported to San Diego International Airport, where he can board Air Force One and coordinate America's response to the incident from air until his term ends in just over 15 minutes. We'll take a couple calls now from our viewers. Once again, our phone number is 212-664-7665. Our first one is from Michael. Hello, Michael. Hey, the attackers, whoever they were, really kicked the hornet's nest. I'm on Central Avenue in Albuquerque, and I've just heard at least five jets taking off in the airbase. Jesus Christ, they're loud as fuck! Thank you, Michael. But I have to cut you off there. We're a family-friendly station. Let's go to Robert now. I can also hear the jets, but I'm not calling about that. I'd like to say something to the attackers. Go ahead. Wherever you are, wherever you are, America will find you and crush you into the dirt. Like the other guy said, you've kicked the hornet's nest, and we'll stop at nothing to find you. I'd even do it myself if needed. I'd gladly take a bullet for America. But that wouldn't happen. I'm a Marine, you know, so I could deal with them, no problem. I see. Thank you for your service. How long have you been in the Marines? I, uh, just completed basic training. But you learn a lot even in basic, you know. I'm real jacked, and the terrorists don't know jack about how tough we are. Well, I'm glad you and the rest of the military are protecting us. Thank you for calling. And again, our number is 212-664-7665 if you want to call in. We now have confirmation that Marine One has landed at San Diego International. Sitting President Whitaker has boarded Air Force One and the plane is now taxiing at high speeds to the runway. All ground traffic at the airport has been stopped and the area is now a no-fly zone. Meanwhile, it appears that President-elect Anderson did not go to the White House as we believed he would. Observers report that his motorcade stopped halfway to the White House and he's now taken a Marine helicopter to Andrews Air Force Base. We have an expert on the line with a statement on all of the aircraft launches. Gene Foster is an Air Force officer. Mr. Foster? Well, the activity at Kirkland Air Force Base here in Albuquerque is very concerning on its own. But it's not just our area. Air bases across the country are scrambling. If this were just an isolated attack, on the inauguration by a small number of people, then you would only expect bases in close proximity to Washington to launch aircraft, and only a few planes at that. As we speak, there's over 40 military aircraft in the air across the country that mere minutes ago were on the ground. Clearly, this isn't just a few people with guns at a ceremony. Our government is responding as if there's a massive, tangible threat to the whole country. And with the Taiwan crisis, my best bet is China. I just hope it's the military flexing its muscles to prevent an escalation rather than an escalation already happening behind closed doors. That's all I have to say for now. Thanks for having me on your station. Thanks for calling, Mr. Foster. And our sources confirm that bases around the United States are launching aircraft at an alarming pace. President Whitaker is now leaving San Diego in Air Force One, and the president-elect has just gotten off the helicopter at Andrews Air Force Base. It seems he'll be taking off on Boeing E-4B, nicknamed Nightwatch. It's an aircraft similar to Air Force One, but oriented towards strategic command and control. We do not believe George Anderson has been sworn in yet. He'll need to be sworn in before 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, when Whitaker's term expires. And in Washington, police have been unable to find the assailants who interrupted the inauguration ceremony, but they assure the public they are working as diligently as possible. Fortunately, although some have sustained minor injuries from the rush to leave the area, nobody seems to have been seriously injured by the attackers themselves. We'll be taking a few more calls at 212-664-7665. That's 212-664-7665. Next, we have Maria. I just got a call from my brother-in-law in Hawaii. There's a ton of sirens going off and he says there's a warning on the TV about an air threat? It's from the Pacific Command. Like the false alarm that was on the news years ago. But that was a missile warning. This is for planes, like an air raid or something. 
Is this a hoax like last time? It could be. We don't have any information on this. With this alert and all the fighters in the air, our best hope is that the military is responding to a false positive. There have been many false alarms throughout history and every time the situation comes before it could escalate. It's very likely that this will happen here. Well, I hope so. Goodbye. Goodbye, Maria. Now we have James on our phone line. What's your take on the situation? Hey, I think a missile just launched. A big one. Are you sure? Jets have been taking off from Kirtland Air Force Base. I can hear it too, and it's louder than the fighters. But it could easily just be a large aircraft with an afterburner. No. I've seen missile launches in person. And I'm zoomed in on it right now. That right there is a Minuteman missile. Oh, this is bad. Real bad. Thank you, James. We'll do our best to get confirmation on that. And we've just confirmed Maria's report. The U.S. Pacific Command is asking residents of Alaska, Hawaii, Guam, and American Samoa to shelter in place due to a potential attack by air. The threat appears to be aircraft, as opposed to missiles. There are currently no warnings from New Mexico or anywhere else in the continental U.S., and there's no evidence of any terror attacks following the one at the inauguration. With both the sitting president and the president-elect in the air on Air Force One and Night Watch respectively, officials believe there's no longer any threat of assassination. We're told both Whitaker and Anderson have been fully briefed on the situation, and they're currently in a conference call. Anderson will be sworn in within the next five minutes, before Whitaker's term ends. The wait is because, I quote a statement just released, In a situation like this, the transfer of command and control should be executed carefully with precise timing. The Taiwan crisis has placed the U.S. on high alert, but now the alert level seems to be even higher. Numerous government officials have been observed moving to secure locations over the last 10 minutes. Military bases are entering a lockdown, with transport vehicles and MP patrols being recalled. Many air bases now have as much as a fourth of their available aircraft in the air. In addition to fighters, it's reported that strategic bombers and stratotankers, planes capable of refueling other aircraft in the air, are starting to take off alongside early warning and control aircraft. An onlooker would get the impression that the U.S. military is preparing to some sort of battle of annihilation over American airspace. Experts have tweeted that, at DEFCON 3, with 5 being the normal level, it's supposed to take 15 minutes for the Air Force to mobilize. The rapid response time now being observed implies that the U.S. has been on higher military readiness for at least a week. However, multiple government spokespeople have stated that the air mobilization is a precautionary measure and there is nothing to fear. The U.S. Northern Command has detected a missile threat to New Mexico. A missile may impact within minutes. This is not a drill. If you are indoors, stay indoors. If you are outdoors, seek immediate shelter in a building. Remain indoors well away from windows. If you are driving, pull safely to the side of the road and seek shelter in a building or lay on the floor. We will announce when the threat has ended. This is not a drill. Take immediate action measures. Repeat. The U.S. Northern Command has detected a missile threat to New Mexico. A missile may impact within minutes. This is not a drill. If you are indoors, stay indoors. If you are outdoors, seek immediate shelter in a building. Remain indoors well away from windows. If you are driving, pull safely to the side of the road and seek shelter in a building or lay on the floor. We will announce when the threat has ended. This is not a drill. Take immediate action measures. You've, uh, just heard it from the emergency alert system that there's this missile threat here in Albuquerque and in all of New Mexico. Everyone listening should seek shelter. I'll continue to bring you news and information for another few minutes, but you should stop what you're doing and get underground. And in fact, our partners in other states are reporting similar alerts on their stations, so it seems the threat is nationwide. And, and this just in... Police at the inauguration have searched through all the belongings abandoned by attendees during the evacuation, and they found several depleted firecrackers. Firecrackers? Really? That's what caused all this? Some fucking prank? I, uh, apologize for that there. 
we are a family friendly. is an emergency action notification. Please stand by for important information. This is a national emergency. Please stand by for important information. Please stand by for a message from the President of the United States. Please stand by for a message from the President of the United States. My fellow Americans, I don't even know where to begin. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to say. What happened today is beyond comprehension. I am the rest of the government made many mistakes. And now we're facing an unimaginable tragedy. And there was this prank. With firecrackers at the inauguration. And in the chaos, we thought it was a terror attack. For the longest time, we believed that. Our radar, it... The sensitivity was increased. In an error it showed us something that wasn't there. An air raid against Hawaii. I... I... I made a decision. Right there. I had to. I went against every doubt inside me and chose the wrong option. I ordered a re... A, I nuked China. My gut said no. George said no, screamed no, but in the end, I said yes. Now, millions, millions are going to die. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. That was a message from President Whitaker. Ladies and gentlemen, the live inauguration of George Anderson. Raise your right hand. Take the oath, sir. There's no time. Now, repeat after me. I, George Douglas Anderson, do solemnly swear. Uh, I, George Douglas Anderson, solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute that I, I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. The office of President of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability, and will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Shit. Music off! I... I don't even know what to say. I'm... I'm gonna go. I don't think we're coming back. This is KCINFM, Albuquerque, signing off. Do your best to stay safe.
if you can.